So uh, the first uh, block of uh, news and updates is related to something that we spoiled uh, during the previous couple of weeks. Uh, it's related to Azure.NET uh, days. And uh, the reason why today I wanted to highlight this update because this event actually happened. It happened previous week and now all these uh, nice presentations are available and you can take a look at what is interested interesting for you what is attractive for example i personally watched uh, scott hanselman's uh, presentation which is about uh, his way of developing the applications because he has some production applications blogging application uh, podcast applications few other and he showed actually how he how he does all the development and so on and uh, i really enjoy uh, the way how he presents all the things um so for me it was like uh, more interesting to watch at his another presentation than uh, what he shared but anyway content was also quite interesting so you guys also may pick up something uh, that may be attractive for you that may may be applicable for your applications by the way guys did you watch anything so maybe you would like to share some interesting topic that uh, you watched i personally watched uh presentation related to uh, YARP library yeah. because on yes, current project uh, I used it for one of our proof of concepts for mm -hmm. proxy service very very minimal proxy service and yeah it's a very interesting topic for me because they use this library actively inside Azure actually it's called dog fooding for Azure app service so it serves millions or billions of requests per day and it's a very interesting technology for use mm -hmm. for your project if you need it actually yeah we also adapted yarp on our project um, and uh, we use it for uh, as a reverse proxy obviously um, so we use it in all the bff components or, or edge components um, so yes we we allocate like minimum amount of resources and it can handle wrote all the requests to all the necessary downstream services and works really nice. Yeah, so. the very important part is that it doesn't perform any materialization stuff. So mm -hmm. It's just it's all streaming, like streams. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. just doing streaming from backend to front end. Agree, really nice. Did they mention that they updated documentation for this stuff? <laughs> for Yarp? I'm not sure. <laughs> Documentations, uh, documentation looks not very well from my perspective. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, anyway, so we mentioned several times before and today we can also share that now you can watch uh, the recording, uh, pick up what is really interesting for you and uh, enjoy nicely uh, presented uh, materials um on this azure.net days um all right so uh, let's move on to another one um blog which is related to uh, .NET 8 preview 3 um again microsoft continue developing the new version the next version of .NET, uh and uh, this time they released um also a bunch of interesting things um so yeah, yeah. Me... one one of such interesting things that I wanted to highlight is uh, change in the like build tooling and the folder stru folder structure, especially because probably everyone at the start of their career struggled with what is, what what is in bin folder, what is an option folder, how to properly publish this stuff, how to organize it, and it was like a tribal knowledge like it's okay it's hard coded it's in a such structure and you have to know how it works how it structured but now they introduce optional setting maybe they will change it to be a default but for now you can enable it manually manually in your pro in your build props file it allows you to manage your build output and artifacts in a very common way to put it to dot artifacts folder and to organize by project by uh, output type by target framework and it might 
uh, improve your development productivity in terms of how to how to organize your ci cd properly and in in unified way for several projects uh, but maybe yeah, at I mean, the first stage it will not work well with existing <laughs> build tooling yeah i mean the, the only thing that you have to do is to uh, toggle this use artifacts output you need to set it to true and then all this bin obj publish package uh, folders will be uh, placed in dot artifacts right folder yeah and uh, for me it's uh, interesting that in dot net 8 they try to pay more attention to build tooling because recently they um, they changed default setting for .NET Publish, for example, because it worked for years in a way that it produced build <laughs> build version of your uh, application, even if you try to do a publish and until you specify a release of uh, like config release configuration for your output, you you, you won't have a release. You will have a build, and in this release, they changed the way how it works. How actually folder structure also interesting commands that they introduced is dot network load clean because sometimes on developers machines uh, for like lifetime of your development for years you might have a lot of different versions of dot net of workloads installed because workloads uh, like thing they call for some additional stuff that they um, like force you to use in, if you would like to use some additional functionality like .NET MAUI. It has its own workload that you need to install additionally in order to use it, and you might have a lot of outdated or obsolete or maybe even security, uh, not, not security compliant stuff, and mm -hmm. yeah, you can clean up it properly. So a, this is this is actually to fix yeah. all the potential issues with your workloads. Um, for example, if something may be broken because you tried manually to do something or, or, or something like that. Yeah. How does it how does it work? You have to provide something that it has it has to be removed, or you just do something automatically. I mean, this command. That, you know, you know, I just just type this command and. What, what happens? It will remove some preview version or remove everything and leave you with a plain uh, .NET and your PC. <laughs> I, don't know. I definitely need to play with this command mm -hmm. to understand yeah. how this works. Um, right. So, any other interesting things here, or some um, more like about different tweaks and optimization? Yeah, one, one more thing that is related to native IoT is introduction of um, source generation for configuration binding because for now configuration binding heavily relies on reflection in runtime to to construct your types your objects based on your source configurations and it's not compatible with um, ahead of time compilation so they introduced uh, so they don't just introduce a new source generator from my understanding but they also introduce the option for compiler to pick up such generated methods over existing methods from a library that relies on reflection. I'm not sure how it implemented exactly for now, but yes. the yeah. Sounds a bit complicated, right? But uh, seems like it is essential part. Uh, if they, for example, if they want to uh, make an IoT compilation for a real projects, not for yeah, just the whole world because configuration is in every every in each project mm -hmm. nowadays so they have to do it otherwise it will be just a toy that you can play around and put on shelf because it will not be possible to use in a real project yeah so the rest updates as, as far as i understand mostly related to different optimizations uh, in jit compiler pgo yeah, well, optimization yeah. and other things well, that's that's also good stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's move next. And uh, this this preview three actually is the first preview when uh, a new C sharp language features uh, were announced. And uh, so upcoming version of C sharp will be C sharp 
12 and now we have like several features that we can taste right yes <laughs> it's pretty interesting features that was already introduced in c sharp 12 preview i would say opinionated uh, i would say opinionated <laughs> yeah because <laughs> we have hot discussion uh, in comments regarding these features yeah but from my perspective uh, from one side we can use it yeah um, <clears throat> the first um, feature that was introduced its primary constructor for classes in, in and structs um, it enable us to pass parameters uh, to to the class itself yeah and to use in the class body uh, because um, it will be captured yet and allowed in the whole scope of the class um, i mean I, I mean this this primary constructors looks uh, look very similar to record constructor. Yes, yes, but What's the difference? It, 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 difference, yeah, uh, because um, on behind send send, yeah, it it use uh, private fields, yeah, for classes, but for records, uh, it will be created uh, properties. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So I, um, I think I think uh, something like that they tried to introduce like maybe in C sharp six or so well many years ago but for some reason decided to postpone uh, and now that's it's it's another iteration of this feature that they will try to uh, introduce in C sharp by the way um, you mentioned um, you mentioned uh, capability to play with this um, with these features and uh, I have another link here which is the link to C sharp uh, lab and uh, here you can choose a particular feature and try it out for example uh, for these uh, primary constructors i have to select this c sharp next version primary constructors and now i can for example declare in the class uh, right in the class i can declare a primary constructor and uh, see what will be in reality what will be in the uh, well it's, it's it's obviously it's just a roslin thing mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can see what what is a real code behind uh, behind this construction so where is the private field uh well i think uh, it, it was omitted i think it was omitted because i didn't uh, use this at all so for uh, example if i try you can use it in your m method <laughs> or for, for example yeah and uh, do something like um okay so i'm trying to do something wrong right now oh, okay this. this right uh okay so okay let's let's do them my property okay oh sh now we should see this uh private field Uh, yes, looks like this is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can play with this feature. Yeah. Yes, uh, the next feature related to using um, LS uh, for additional types, as you know, now we can use for named types. Yeah, but now we can use for any types except uh, a reference. Um, reference nullable types yeah <clears throat> um, from my perspective it can be useful when when we have um, complicated uh, declaration of tuples yeah in yeah. this case we can apply a meaningful uh, name for it and reuse in our application in this case i think it will be useful <laughs> Yeah, I think for for tuples, it, it it will make this feature will make them much more useful because uh, this these declarations uh, each time when you need mm -hmm. to, to to create a tuple instance, um, it's it's too verbose, I think. So if we uh, use use tuples with combinations of, with with combination of the with this feature in the combination with this feature, it will be much much more mm -hmm. convenient. What's the availability of this feature? I mean, we will be visible from outside the class where it is defined i mean using 
I, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can try to use it like with, with global keywords. So, oh, okay. for example, if you, if you right. type global using. Got it. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure if it will work like that. I hope it will. <laughs> But in, in, in comments, I, I see that it's it's not working for global. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they sh should uh, implement it in the future, yeah. I hope they will. I think, yeah. And the last feature related to adding default values for lambda expressions. Um, and it's uh, pretty straightforward, yeah. We can use, uh, uh, like, like we use it for, for the methods, yeah. Uh, just adding default values for uh, lambda parameters. Uh, I think it's, it, will, it will be useful in minimal APIs, yeah? Because, yeah. Uh, we c f for example, for pagination, yeah? We can uh, uh, define default values and reuse it, yeah. I'd bet that this feature was requested by minimal API developers. Well. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> because <laughs> several other features were requested previously as well by such a team. Like uh, var for for lambdas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, not, not, nothing really critical, nothing really huge uh, is announced right now. So three pretty minor changes. Um, so, well, yeah. Let's see what what they will release next. But for now, three uh, pretty minor changes. Well, okay. Yes. Maybe that's okay. All right. Uh, what else do we have in preview three? Um, so this this one is about ESP.NET Core updates. And uh, as far as I see in this summary, uh, there there are a lot of nice features released this time. Um, yeah, in this preview, they introduce to the to the public such a thing as uh, source generators for minimal APIs, and they um like uh sum up what what is ready to be used in a native IT from a spinet core stack not uh, not everything to sum up because not scenarios are still supported some scenarios are going to be supported some scenarios will not be supported probably <laughs> at all but for now uh, even in a, in a in a current shape you can have a lot of benefits from Utilizing of native IoT such as reduced this footprint, which can help you if you want to build uh, uh, containers. It will reduce the size of containers, the time for to to, to 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 publish such container, to push it to your container registry, to deploy, to start, and so on. Also, startup type is reduced because they elim it eliminates just-in-time compilation at all from from this process. So you'll have a ready to use application and it can benefit you in scenarios when you when you need a fast startup like a lambda functions or Azure function. Uh, Azure functions, yeah. yeah. When you pay for warmed up or warm warmed up lambda or when you pay for additional time that is consumed by your lambda. Because if your lambda uh, processing for example takes like 50 milliseconds, but startup start up time is like a 200 milliseconds. Uh, almost you 200, just pay, yeah. Yeah, you just pay for JIT most of the time. And uh, not, also yeah. your, your users wouldn't, wouldn't be really happy if this is, let's say, HTTP backend, right? Yeah. So this is like extra time on, on the request uh, needed um, each time when, when you do not have um, warmed up lambdas. Which yeah. is not very good. Also, reduced memory de demand because the less memory your application consumes, the more applications you can run in parallel in a Kubernetes, for example, when you have some uh, specific resources available for your application. And in this table, you can see a comparison of uh, like default applications that they published as usual, and when they published it with native IoT, and we see uh improvements in startup time and upsize by more than 80 percent in both cases yeah, that, that, that's a dramatic change yeah really like yeah. this improvement especially regarding startup time i believe that it's not only for developers and consumers of spanet core 
uh, platform, but also for Azure and for Microsoft as well. That's for because sure. The less you spend your resources, the more you can utilize them, or you can benefit from it. And in this uh, table, they uh, summed up uh, what is currently supported fully or partially, and what is not supported yet. For example, gRPC is fully supported, and minimal API is partially supported with the use of source generator for request delegate factory. But other scenarios like MVC, which will rely on uh, reflection blazers in LR and authentication are not supported yet. But for authentication, they consider implementation of GVT authentication at least because it's mostly commonly mostly commonly used scenario. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of yeah. Uh, so they show what you can do currently. Yeah. So most significant limitation is, is that in order to publish such application, you have to publish it on the same operation system, operating system as you target. Like if you target Linux, you have to publish on Linux. I'm wondering if it will be possible to publish using WSL, WSL on Windows, but I'm not sure yet <laughs> because yeah, you will have uh, Linux on Windows and why not? Because but you already can run your applications on WSL currently. But you can build it on, your, on, for example, on Windows, you can build it for Linux and deploy to Linux, right? No, in order to build it, you have to, in order to publish it for Linux, you have to publish it on Linux. Already on, not on Windows, you, you will not be able to publish it on Windows. Okay. Because it requires native dependencies to build the stuff. Yeah, I, I see no no reasons why this shouldn't work in WSL too. Yeah, should be I, working. I do. Interesting. Also, interesting stuff that they introduced recently is the server side rendering for Blazor components. It's a uh, like highly demanded feature in the front end world, and it's supported by most major players in the front end frameworks area, such as React, Angular, Vue, and in this uh, preview, they introduce server-side rendering for Blazor, but not on only server-side rendering, but also rendering for Blazor or any markdown outside of your SP.NET Core stack and outside of HTTP request processing. For example, if you like to produce email with a markdown, you can do it in a simple console application with using of such libraries. Yeah, pretty exciting to see mm -hmm. how it will work. Anything else interesting, or we can move on? Oh, well, let's move on. We have okay, so much yeah. time. Um, all right. So a few other uh, pretty interesting uh, things that will come in ESP.NET Core uh, 8. The one is uh, related to improvements in authentication and identity part. Uh, yes. Uh... ESP.NET Core team shared their plans yeah, to improve authentication, authorization, and identity. Um, they're going to create new APIs uh, to make easier uh, to come up, customize user login yeah, and identity management experience. Um, in addition, they're going to remove identity server from uh, SPA templates and um, going to add some improvements uh, for us all self-hosted solutions yeah and at the end uh, the Natasha the Z community uh, want to have some guidance guidance and scenario based uh, solutions in documentation yeah because uh, for different scenarios uh, <clears throat> we, we want to see different solutions yeah and they're going to update the documentation. Yeah, from my perspective, okay. it's not an improvement yet. It's just a declaration of yes. intention to improve <laughs> it in the <Okay>. future. <laughs> because re because in the past they received a lot of complaints from from community in a different channels like uh, mm -hmm. Reddit or comments on YouTube that current current authentication and authorization system is complex. It's high. It has high learning curve. It has poor documentation in some places. 
not enough examples and so on. And every time you have to implement uh, authentication, you have to implement like a bicycle, <laughs> custom mm -hmm. bicycle on top of some existing parts. So let's see how it goes. Yes, yes. Uh, another improvement was related to uh, tooling uh, enhancement uh, for ASP.NET Core routing uh, was introduced some uh, syntax uh, highlighting, yeah, uh, autocomplete of parameters and road names, uh, as well as autocomplete of road constraints. Um, for me, it looks good because uh, we can shift uh, feedback left, yeah. Uh, during the development, we can see what's going wrong uh, with uh, our development of routing. And in addition, yeah, uh, um, was added uh, some uh, analyzers and fixers uh, related to common errors during the development, yeah, like missing um, closed break brackets and road mismatching and, and, and so on. And I, I like this I, stuff I, about. I've tr yeah, I, I've tried it and it looks good. Mm -hmm. Especially syntax highlight and analyzers mm -hmm. look super cool. Yeah. A small but like... very, very nice enhancements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only for Visual Studio, not for Visual Studio <laughs> Code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not, not for Rider yet. <laughs> Rider supported under uh, from from scratch. It was ah, implemented a few oh. years ago, so it could be passed mm -hmm. from <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe. Yeah. All right, um, we have uh, two more minutes, and we have two more small, pretty small uh, updates that we can share. Yeah, this one is OpenAI and .NET. So. Artificial intelligence. It is uh, this few words is super widely used nowadays, and uh, the functionality of it, I mean, AI functionality is already implemented in some Microsoft products like Bing, uh, GitHub, or Microsoft Office, and, and, and so on and so on. So, and I, as a developer, can think about, I want to use this, uh, this functionality in my .NET application. Is it possible? And uh, in nutshell, yes, it is possible. Even now it is possible. And the Open AI organization has a plan to introduce a series of articles about how to work with it, how to interact with it, right? But currently they provided a few examples, how to start with it, how to play with it, how to create from scratch few applications with uh, simple integration with Open AI functionality, like a chatbot, like a image generator and a text translator and, and so on. And it has a initial support of it, uh, initial support of ASDK, Azure ASDK, right? It is in preview now. I mean, how to interact with it from from that .NET, that .NET code. The first, uh, the first option it is a uh, Azure SDK, right? And the second option it is a REST API. REST API it is, uh, I don't know, it will, it will be useful or not. But the Azure SDK, if it will be implemented. Uh, and the, it will be correct implemented, let's say, not as the rest of Azure SDK. Uh, it will be you know, super useful for us if you want to play with this stuff. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I mean, currently, uh, almost each customer uh, constantly asks uh, what we can do with uh, this chat G GPT technology uh, or similar technologies. So we see a huge demand on, on this artificial intelligence huge demand. stuff. Demand is huge, right? But no one know how. You how know, yeah, exactly. What to do with this? Uh, everyone wants to do something with mm -hmm. with with uh, this open AI and or a, a, or a similar technology, but no one knows what exactly they want they want to do. Mm -hmm. You just need to ask <laughs> ChatGPT how to use it <laughs> in a specific case. Yeah, yeah. probably. That's right. Uh, okay, so the last one. Um, is related to improving Visual Studio performance with a with a new in, instrumentation tool. This is about how we can uh, troubleshoot um, the code that works slowly for some reasons. Um, so now you can instrument uh, your application um, and then see what are the hottest paths uh, paths and uh, where you have an area to improve. So um, 
really nice uh, all all these tools like memory profiler or cpu profiler or this instrumentation very very useful things um, and uh, it's really nice to have all them in one place which is a visual studio for example a month ago or so on the project we had a memory leak situation we used uh, one of the uh, community libraries which is uh, under the hood uses a uh, razor uh, technology um, and so we used it for email generations and we realized that if we start generating lots of emails uh, we see that uh, memory increases and uh, never uh, decreases and uh, the reason was pretty interesting uh, because it's razor based technology uh, each time when we compile a new email template it created uh, a new dot net assemblies and then loaded in the up domain and never unload it, obviously, because this is how .NET works. It, once the DLL is loaded in your app domain, it's, it, it's never unloaded. Um, so yes, yeah, memory prof profiler ha helped us to uh, identify this. And uh, one, one, here no, we one note, one note here. Sorry, uh, we Visual Studio had and has this kind of functionality, right? This is a rewriting analyzers and instrumentation to it it works much more more faster than before like a 20 30, uh, 25 time faster or something like this well, that, that's a big improvement <laughs> <laughs> all right um anything else guys that we wanted to share or that's it? it's a good example of dog, food, dog fooding <laughs> when they use their own tools to improve their own tools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think uh, that's it, and we are actually out of time. Um, so um, thanks everyone who joined uh, our uh, .NET Morning Coffee. All the links are available in our uh, list URL, URL list. Uh, I've already shared that, so anyway, I've just copy pasted it one more time. So guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, wish you good luck and have a good rest of your day. Have a nice day, guys. Bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Bye.